How to pin miniatures. Welcome to the complete guide on pinning your minis. A lot of miniatures need to be assembled before you can paint them. Sometimes the bits that you're trying to fix together are heavy, like this here, or they have very frail connection points made from different materials, making them more difficult to glue together. Or if you do eventually get them to stick, they're so weak that they break apart as soon as you knock them. Pinning is also a really helpful technique for repairing broken minis or for doing conversions where you want to take parts from different kits and smush them all together to make something unique. The basic idea is to stick a pin or peg between the parts you want to connect together to reinforce the join and increase the surface area the glue can act on which will help hold everything together. To do that you need a tool to drill tiny holes, in this case a pin vise and something to actually use as the pin to hold the pieces together. There's other stuff you can use a pin vise for that can help with your hobby too, as shown on my handy and not scribbled on the first piece of paper I could find, 5 uses for a pin vise. You can use a pin vise for accurately connecting two pieces together, usually heavy or fiddly parts that only have a small area that can be glued, which usually makes them really weak, like arms and legs and body parts. You can use it for drilling out tiny holes through things, this is really helpful if you want to drill out gun barrels, keyholes on doors, whatever. Uh, I've got here my not quite finished yet Space Marine Hero and you can see I've drilled out part of the gun barrel to make it a bit more realistic. There's other things you can do too that might not seem obvious straight away. You can drill holes to hold magnets, so if you're playing a game where there are lots of different types of weapon loadout or you want to store a million bits for transport or maybe even swap between bases, magnetising is a really good technique. You can do a similar thing with pins themselves, just glue the pin in at one end and then use the other end to pull it in and out. You have to make sure the two parts are pretty tight together so the arm or weapon you're pinning doesn't come falling off. I've seen people use connectors from VGA cables or other electronics to hold things straight together. You can combine magnetising with pinning. The magnet holds the bits in place and the pin acts as a locating peg to make sure you get the parts the right way around and the right orientation. The last thing you can do uh, that most people do with a pin vise is to fix minis into their bases or terrain. It's basically the same as normal pinning but you don't need to be quite as accurate when drilling into a base. It just needs to go onto a flattish bit. So there's lots of stuff a pin vise can do. I've got mine here, let's take a closer look. You can get them from most gaming and hobby stores, online, all the painting and some of the mini manufacturers also do their own. Small pin vices are used for jewellery making as well, so you might be able to find one in an arts and crafts shop or a DIY store. This is a swivel head pin vise. It's probably the most common type you'll see used on miniatures. It's just a little twist drill. The swivel head goes into your palm and then you turn the rest with your fingers to start drilling holes. There are a couple of other types you can get. Uh, there's one with a ball on the end instead, which is fine as long as you've got big hands. The Citadel one is just a swivel head pin vise with a fancy knob on the end. It won't magically work any better than one like this, but it will put a bigger hole in your wallet. There's the Archimedes drill, which has a spring you push down and that turns the head, making it a bit easier to use one handed. You can also get fixed bit pin vices and double ended ones, but they're pretty rubbish, so I wouldn't bother with either of those. You could argue that you could use a mini drill or a dremel for pinning, but while you can get the drill bit in them, they usually have one fixed speed, and the RPM is far too high for putting a small hole into a plastic or metal mini. It'll either shred it, vibrate your hand to death, or force the bit you're trying to drill to fly off behind the sofa. Yes, you can use a bench vise or clamps to hold the parts down, but that's a lot of messing about. You could use a normal cordless drill or electric screwdriver because you can gently squeeze the trigger to get a low speed with a high torque. But unless you're a commission painter doing a whole army at once, a pin vise is probably going to be the easiest way to go. Most pin vises come with a set of tiny drill bits too, often in these weird little plastic sleeves that sort of push themselves together. You can buy sets of mini drill bits separately if they break or if you want a specific size. There's loads of different size bits in this set. Uh, slightly Slightly bigger one, smaller one, teeny tiny one, teeny teeny tiny one, and somewhere in between. Once you've got all your bits, you've got to put them in the pin vise. Take the pin vise, and you can take it apart by unscrewing it at the top, uh, like this. And here as well, further down, with a little bit more effort.
inside you'll find these two little collect thingies. Each one has a different hole at each end that'll accept a different size drill bit. So you choose the right drill you want. Let's say this one. Oh. And then you find the collet that it fits into. So uh, this end, there we go. And once you're happy, uh, screw the rest of the pin vise back together. Get the base, screw the middle bit on. It'll only go in one way, so don't worry about getting the wrong way around. Then pick up the collet that you've picked, push the drill bit in, get the collar, stick it over the top, and screw it down. The collar at the top kind of acts like a chuck on a normal drill and grips the drill bit right in place. I'd suggest pushing the drill bit down as far as it will go so there's only a little sticking out. That'll help stop it from snapping on you. And that's it. You're ready to start putting holes in stuff. Pin vice bits can drill through plastic and pewter or lead minis pretty easily. You might need to apply a bit more pressure for resin minis as some manufacturers use a denser resin than others and it might be a bit more tricky to drill through. That's your pin vise sorted. What else do you need? Well, you need super glue and something to act as a pin. You can use different size paper clips, like this one. Uh, you can use push pins, wire, pegs from electronics, any sort of metal rod will do. Just whatever you do, don't use cocktail sticks, toothpicks or wooden dowels. They'll hold the parts in place for gluing. But if they get dropped or get too much force applied to them, they're just going to snap. And you'll have to drill the remains back out and repin it. Metal pins, meanwhile, are ducked off so they'll tend to bend before they break. You can normally push them back into place if you drop them or something goes wrong. Sometimes they use brass rod instead of raiding the stationary cupboard at work. It is more expensive but you can get it in exact diameters so you know exactly which drill bit to use. You can also cut up different lengths without having to unbend a paperclip. Brass is an alloy, so it's not going to react in a weird way with old lead minis, unlike perhaps mild steel paperclips. But then again, the metals are the glue in between them, and the pins are so small, uh, you're really not likely to get any sort of corrosion on a pin anyway. Brass rod is also good if you're a commission painter, because you can work out exactly how much you've used and how much to charge. It also looks a bit better if it's being used as a locating pin and you want the bits to be removable and you're going to see it. I'll pin some stuff together for you now and show you some of the things I've learned that might make things a bit easier. Okay, so I don't actually have anything that needs pinning at the minute, so I fished out an old Frostgrove Barbarian sprue from the bits box. I wanted to do something really small and tricky and delicate on camera just to show you how easy pinning can be if you do things right. I'm going to pin this hand to this crossbow, uh, which is really tiny, but it will show you how to pin things together accurately so that they fit together like they're meant to. Out the way, you. Here's a tip. If you're working with tiny pieces, get yourself a lid or a jar or a tray to keep them in. That way you don't knock stuff off the table and spend 10 minutes crawling around the carpet looking for bits. For super, super tiny bits, I'm trying to do this with one hand, there we go. Get some tape, make a loop, and stick it to your tray or desk and then stick your tiny tiny piece to the tape like so that way if you bump the tray or the table the tiniest most delicate piece of your mini won't go flying into orbit anyway the first thing to do here is to dry fit the two pieces together and make sure that they sit flush with each other and that you're happy with it So with my arm, the hand connects pretty well into it. There we go. If they don't fit together well, you're going to want to get out your file or your knife and trim down the pieces until you're happy with how they fit. Once you've done that, you want to work out where to put your pin so everything joins up properly. If I'm fitting something like this together or with a socket that's quite difficult to see, there's a couple of things that we can do to make it easier for us. So what I do is I get myself a cocktail stick or a brush and some brightly coloured paint. Other brands are available? Anyway, crack your paint open. Oh, there we go. Oh dear, what a mess. Get your paint. Get your cocktail stick, take one of the pieces. 
And what you want to do is get a blob of paint. Whoop. You only need a little dot and dab it into the middle of the piece that you want to connect together. Like so. There we go. Ooh, technical difficulties. I'm back. Right. So you've put the dab of paint on. Uh, now what you want to do is work out where you're going to go. Try and line up the two pieces together. So I think we're going to go about there. Oh, maybe a bit of adjustment. You want to line them up in such a way that you're going to get the result that you want. So touch them together. There we go. That's better. That way you get paint on both halves, which are going to line up on each piece, so therefore you know exactly where to drill on each part. Even if you've already painted the parts, don't worry too much, as you're going to drill out the orange paint anyway, and it will disappear in the join. Put the two pieces in the tray to dry, and right, we're done with the paint, so we can put that away too. We'll just give those a couple of seconds more to dry. Once they're done, pick up one of the pieces, get your craft knife or scalpel, and what you want to do is poke the tip into the middle of your paint dot. Quite difficult to do reaching around the camera, but uh, let's see. Somewhere over here. Once you've got it on the paint dot, give it a little twirl. This will form a tiny pilot hole to make sure the drill bit goes into the right spot. You know, I have seen people use a drawing pen or a needle to do this, but you get a lot more control with the long handle of the knife, and you can just turn it rather than push. If you apply pressure on a pin and it slips, don't be surprised if it goes into your hand. Once we've done that part, we'll do the other one too. Oh, that was a lot easier. Give it a twirl. And back into the lid they go. Done with the knife. The last step is to choose the size of pin that you want to put in. I'm going to use this old push pin. It's got a really tiny diameter compared to our brass rod or paper clips. So we can make a smaller hole in our really tiny pieces. Have a look at your drill bits and find one that's about the right size for the pin. If you need one of the bigger drill bits for the pin, I'd suggest you work up to it. Drill a smaller diameter hole with a smaller bit first, and then swap out to the bigger drill bit to widen the hole. It's going to make things a lot easier for you. With mine, I can use the smallest drill bit I have for the pin. So we can do all of it in one go. Once you've got the bit, find the right collar, put the bit in, and tighten the collar. And OK, that's it, we're ready to drill. Choose one of the parts, put it in one hand, and rest the bottom of your hand onto the table. Then put the pin vise in your other hand. Find the pilot hole that we did with the knife. I'm trying to reach around the camera here. Uh, is there somewhere? Oh, there we go. Success! Look above and to the side to make sure that you're going to go in straight and that you're happy with it. And then just start twisting. Take your time. You can always go nice and slow with this, especially with plastic, it's easier to cut through. You can always stop and turn the vise anti-clockwise uh, to reverse the bit out and also get rid of some of the burrs and bits of broken plastic. Once you've gone a little way in, you can put your thumb on the drill bit to see how far you've gone. The pins for this don't need to be very long, so you don't need to actually go too far. With plastics, you can tell if you're getting too close to going all the way through, because you'll see the plastic start to change colour. That's your cue to stop. Uh, I've found that metal and resin are a bit more difficult to judge. You will get less resistance as you get closer to the other side, and there's less material between you and your hand. I have found with resin, though, that you can get air pockets and cavities inside, 
as long as you go slow, they won't take you by surprise. If you need to adjust the length of the drill bit in the pin vise, and that'll allow you to make longer holes. Okay, that's that one done. Now to repeat for the other part. You can clean at the end of the hole if you need to with your knife or your file. Just scrape off any excess plastic and material you've got left that might be sticking out and that will mean that it's easier for you to connect the two pieces together later. Let's do the other part. Yeah. Drilling, 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 drilling. There we go, both parts drilled out. Now to judge the length of your pin, uh, what I tend to do is get my pin and poke the end into each hole. Can't see, who put this camera in the way? Uh, there we go. And then take the other one and see which is shallower. In this case it's this one and then once I've done that I'll just double the size double the length of the pin and that will give me a good idea of how big it needs to be don't worry too much about being hyper accurate with this if you make the pin too long the pieces won't go together and you can always cut the pin down if the pin is too short you can either cut a new one or just put a bit more glue into one end of one of the holes. Now that we've decided where we want to go, get yourself some clippers or cutters. You want to put the flat edge against your thumb where you wanted to do the cut. Don't cut yet, just clamp the pin in the jaws of the cutters. To stop this tiny bit of metal flying off and sticking you in the eye, which you don't want, once you've decided where you're going to go, make sure you're happy, wrap the pin in the end of the cutters around your hand, and then do the cut. Done. Move the cutters away, make sure nothing's stuck to either side. Sometimes it can be attached to it. Uh, then unfold your hand and fish the pieces out. There's the large part and there's our pin right in the middle. Stick this bit straight to your tape to make sure that you don't lose it and then take the rest of the pin and either put it back in your hobby box or, or in the tray. Now what you want to do once you've cut out your pin is dry fit the pin between the two pieces to see if it's the right length or not. really small that's in that end crossbow now if we push these two together you'll see that they don't quite join up so this pin's slightly too long and that's fine we can either cut the pin down or draw the hole a little bit deeper I'm going to cut this pin down but get the end pin Think about that much, it's probably about right. Get your cutters again. Clamp them on the join. There we go. And put it in your hand to cover it. And cut. These pieces are going to be super tiny now. Oh, there's that bit. <laughs> and there's our pin. Okay, much better. Do another double check. Get the two parts. There we go, that goes together perfectly. Great. Right, now it's time for gluing. Get yourself some super glue. Uh, now you're gonna to wanna to glue one end at a time to your pin. Now you can either dab your super glue into the hole or onto the pin itself. Now, I've got a very, very short pin like this one, so it's gonna be easier to put some glue on the hole especially showing you guys on the camera. Put the pin somewhere you can get at it reasonably quickly, take the lid off the glue, and dot a tiny amount into just above the hole 
on the joint. Oh, that'll do. Get your pin. And push it in through the glue. The glue will follow it down into the hole and sort of seal it all up. Check on both sides to make sure you're happy with the position and how far down the pin's gone. If you need to, you can always dot on some extra glue. If you've got any excess glue that you don't want, you can wipe it off with a tissue or the end of the cocktail stick that we used for the painting earlier. Uh, it should absorb most of the super glue. This is probably a little bit easier for this tiny part than using a tissue. Again, make sure you're happy with the position. Make sure it hasn't tilted too much. You're going to want to put this back in the lid, give it a chance to set. It shouldn't take very long because we only used a tiny amount of glue. If you went overboard with the glue, once it's dry, you can always scrape it off with a knife or a file anyway. Put the lid back on the glue. Usually it doesn't take very long for the glue to dry. Once it has set, get the other part you wanted to join to. And then you can line them up to double check them, make sure that everything fits and that you're happy with the position of the pin. That's pretty good actually. Yeah, I'm happy with that. It's pretty well in there and looks about right. If it doesn't line up how you want it, you can always make the hole bigger on the other piece, or you can get yourself some pliers and just tweak the uh, direction of the pin. Once you're happy that they dry fit together okay, take the piece you've already done off, get your glue again, and put a little dot just in the hole. Oh, that might have been a little bit too much. Oops, never mind. Get your other piece with the pin. Ooh, push this in. There we go. And then look at it on both sides. Check you've got the position of it where you want it. That's okay. Put the lid back on the glue. And if you need to and it's overspilled, get your cocktail stick again, which is like that. And then Gently wipe off any excess that you need to. This might have been easier if I wasn't directly behind the camera, but there we go. That's it. We've pinned together the arm and the crossbow. Pretty neat, nice and straight, and uh, lines up all right. So uh, you can gap fill if you need to, and that's this done. Two pieces, very small, nicely pinned together. The other common technique when using a pin vise is to pin minis to bases. So let's have a go at that. Sometimes you want to paint your base and mini separately, or maybe the mini doesn't have a moulded base, or a tab for even a slotted base, and it only has tiny little feet to hold it down. That's where pinning comes in. Here's um, most of a Primaris Captain that I've been playing around with. It came with a plain 32mm base, but I wanted to add a bit more terrain on it to make it more interesting. There's a bit of cork glued down and also an old ammo box that I had lying around. The mini's standing partly on the cork and partly on the ammo box. The mini itself is only standing partly on its foot and also on its tippy toes on this side. So I thought I'd pin it to make sure that it stays secure. Once you've pinned the mini, move it around on the base to get the position where you want it. And then dot paint on the end of each pin and put it back into position so that you can work out exactly where to drill the base. This is especially useful when you've got two holes to drill for two pins uh, and it makes sure that you don't go around drilling extra holes that you don't need to. Here's a random bit of arm that I had lying around and a broken sprue that I prepared earlier. I've already put the bin through the arm. Do the same thing as we did on the previous bit. Put the pilot hole in, drill the hole, glue in the pin. You don't have to worry about dotting the paint this time. Just put it as centrally as you can. If the pin sticks out a bit long when you're pinning to bases, 
you can always cut it back or even bend it all the way through the bottom of the base if you need to. Again, decide on your positioning on your base. I think I'm going to go in the middle of this circular bit. Get yourself your paint. If, like me, you're lazy and never clean the top of your dropper bottles, we can skip the cocktail stick stage and get the pin and stick it directly into the paint around the edge. Just need a little dot. Uh, stride. There we go. Get your uh, mini. Get your base. Decide where you want to put it. Yeah, I'm going to go pretty centrally in the middle of this circle here. Try and hold it all securely together. Then put your mini over the top and dot it to the top of your base. There we go, done. The dot of the paint now shows where we want to fix it down. Give this a second to dry. And then you want to do the same thing that we did before. You're going to need your hobby knife, your pilot hole, and your drill and your pin vise to drill the hole. Okay, first things first, let's uh, drill the pilot hole in our base. So in the middle of our paint dot, and give it a twirl. You can see again I'm not applying any pressure to this, I'm just twisting it. Most of the paint's gone with it, but our pilot hole's now there. Once we've done the pilot hole, prepare your drill, get it on the pilot hole, get it lined up again, nice and straight, and start drilling. With this one, I'm going to see if I can drill all the way through the plastic. Normally when you do bases, they're quite thin, so you're likely to go all the way through. If you have lots of burrs of plastic, like I do here, coming off, you can always stop and wipe them off. This is especially important for when you're pinning metal minis. But if you have a lot of metal burrs, you could cut yourself on it, so be a little bit more careful than I'm being with the plastic. You can stop again at any point that you want to. Just to double check that you're happy with the positioning. You can always adjust it and drill a bigger hole, especially with bases. I've drilled all the way through. I have my base. I've got my uh, mini uh, arm or whatever you're using. This is just an example. Uh, dry fit it again just to make sure you check that everything goes in okay. It's gone in pretty flat. You can even spin it all the way around. Uh, which way shall I put this? Probably okay. And then do the same thing that we did before with the glue. Get yourself the super glue. And in this case, because we've got quite a good sized pin, we can apply the glue to the pin. Just get a little bit on there. And if you've got your foot or your contact point, you can put a bit on there too. You don't want to put too much in case it spews out onto your nice paint job of your uh, base. There you go, done. I've based my uh, mini, or uh, it kind of looks like I've just crucified a Space Marine's arm there. Um, yeah. Well, I'm sure that's no problem. <laughs> Now pin your minis, Guardsman, for the Emperor!